Okay, so what we have here is a Bell and Howell 16 millimeter projector. I also have a second one down there, but that one doesn't work as well. <clears throat> Filmo Sound 1535. This was originally owned by the Greenville College. But can't tell you how much junk I've gotten from them. Well, not junk to me, but <laughs> junk to them. So here we have the projection bulb. These things keep blowing out on me, but every time I, uh, every time one burns out, though, I happen to buy another projector, so it kind of works out. The bulb's rated for 50 hours at 250 watts. Then in the back, we have some, a door. <clears throat> we have all the paperwork that goes with it. Ah, and we have the uh, front plate that was missing on the other side. Power cable goes through here, like so. Take up reel goes here. This is the uh, this is what I was talking about. The plate goes right there. These are dated 1973 and stuff. So it's quite old. <clears throat> but it's Bell and Howell, so it's a good model. Bell and Howell will usually last quite a while. So today. English language and how it changes. This stupid school film. Well, man, it's stupid, but boring as hell. The film reeks of vinegar. That's what happens sometimes when it gets old. all three of these tabs, like that, open, 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 then you feed some of it through, the other projector has an option where you can automatically feed it through, it's a lot easier if only it worked. Here's, here's a note though. Right here is the spindle that spins for the sound. It, uh, you have a beam of light that reflects off of the film and the thing spins with it. If you don't have it tight enough, the uh, film won't, won't be all the way on the pulley and so it'll be a little bit off of it and it'll get a, real, a really bad blurry, or a, a weird sound. I don't know how to describe it. I guess you could equate it to static.
with this, you have forward, forward with light, here's the volume, volume control, actually inside here, here's the light that is your um, light detection bulb. It produces the light, the light goes through a lens and is projected onto this reflective drum and then it's reflected through a strip on the film that um, it darkens and lightens to go with the sound that produces the sound. Um, then the light is reflected into the machine where it has a photodiode that detects it and, and transmits the pulses of light into pulses of sound. Or actually pulses of electricity and then the pulses of electricity are transmitted into sound by the speaker, but whatever. You can also run in reverse too. With the projector, you have a heightening control. Oh, oh wrong way. <laughs> it slowly pushes it upwards, see? That way you can make your your picture go up or down. So, oh yeah, well, another thing. Inside of here are some teeth that grab onto the tape. Let's go forward a little bit. In, and they push it down, then they go out. They come in, they grab the holes, they push it down, they come out. If there's not enough room on either side for it to pull the tape down, or to, to, to pull the film down, it will well, it'll most likely just pop out of the holes, but it could shred your film. So make sure you have enough room out here and enough room out here. But then again, if you have too much room, the tape will, be, will start slapping the sides and it'll be really loud. Not saying this is a very quiet machine though, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. So to focus the machine, we turn it on, and then we turn the, we adjust this dial to adjust the lens. Let's right, see. And here I made the mistake I just told you about. I didn't make this tight enough. You see, this should bounce back and forth because of the tension in the in the film. Before before it wasn't. It was stuck in the middle and it wouldn't move because there was no tension on it. But now it's a little tighter, and the film is always up against the sound head, so it should have better sound now. This object gave our language a new word. It was in 1948 that two scientists developed a tiny device. It functioned as a transfer resistor. From these words came a word most of us know today, transistor. Not only was the noun transistor added to our language, but also the adjective transistorized. Describing any electronic device using Okay, so now that I have a video fully played out, or a tape fully played out, I need to rewind it. How I'll do that is I will move the bar into rewind position, then I'll Move the tape back around, try to find where it goes into the... There it goes. Now, rewinding it, just playing it backwards, would take a long time. Like that. 
So, we press the Rewind Multiplier. And that's how you rewind your tape.